But can you talk about two things? One, what some of the early growth challenges were and how you were able to overcome them and scale up on, a, on an international basis. Okay. Um, end of the first year, I had taken no salary, not a dime. We had no profit, but we did, we did break even. And even more important, we, we learned something. And what we learned was that the idea, and it was a new idea, of having a, a, a marketing agency specializing in places rather than products or services was a good idea. The thing I had done wrong, and really wrong, was go to the wrong end of the market. The underdeveloped countries are not the countries to go to. What you should go to are the richer countries, the bigger cities, and particularly the U.S. states, as it turned out. And having learned that lesson and almost lost everything, we, we, with that knowledge, we, we began to go after that kind of client with, with, a, with a first year over, and it worked out well. Our first, I have notes here, our first state clients were Nebraska and New York, and I think we've now represented almost all of the U.S. states at one time or another. Andy, what, what, how many do you know? 43 of the 50 states. 43 of the 50 states. Uh, as far as cities were concerned, I think the first was Dayton, and we probably had 80 or 90 further cities later on with the history of DCI. Canadian provinces, again, I'll ask Andy, what, how many of the Canadian provinces? I think seven of the 10. Seven of the 10. And uh, we, 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 we did pretty well with, uh, with countries as well. France, Germany, Ireland, and Belgium were among the first clients. And most important, the U.S. Department of Commerce, where we got 38 assignments, mainly to develop tourism studies in the underdeveloped areas within the United States. I want to say a word about our mode of organization and respond somewhat to what Bruce talked about in terms of growth. We had a very simple organization. It was the classic outside and inside organization. I was the outside guy doing most of the selling, and my former associate at Puerto Rico, Manny Ellenis, uh, uh, did most of the clients, accompanied by, I think, three or four account executives and a small clerical staff. Um, our aim in those days, and it, it, was, it was not to grow, by the way. It was not to grow. We want, here's, here's what our aims were. We wanted to keep the firm small. We wanted to keep it under a dozen people. We wanted to keep the costs as low as possible. And our, our accountant was tremendously important in that, the two accounts we had in the early days of the firm. We wanted it to be prestigious, and we wanted as little risk as possible, as little risk as possible. The years then went on, and we were making good money with a very small firm, having a hell of a lot of fun. Slowly, we accumulated a quality reputation, and we, t we tended to, to, which tended to discourage competition. We, we, we didn't want another firm going into economic development and specialize in places, and happily, no firm did. The years went by. And then late in 1990, after about 30 years in this business, everything fell apart. My partner, Manny Ellenis, was in a taxi going to an important client meeting when he had a heart attack and he immediately died in the taxi. And we had, at that time, 14 clients, and I, I approached every one of them with, a, with one of two options. The first was that I would shift from sales to service work, and we would continue to handle their assignments efficiently. The second was that we would carry out a full-length search to replace Manny Ellenis with the best person anywhere on earth. And happily, all of the clients picked the second alternative. After a lot of research, a lot of um, uh, interviews, a lot of referrals, we emerged with a choice and that was a fellow named Andy Levine, who happened to be my son, <laughs> and also by, by far the best candidate. And what I didn't realize, I sort of thought that Andy would follow very much in my footsteps and in the direction I've described to you guys. Uh, I did not realize the cataclysmic changes that he had in mind, and it's only, it's only when we get to Andy that we really talk about scale growth. Andy. 
Okay, so um, you know, as, as JFK said on bringing RFK in as Attorney General, nepotism is okay as long as you keep it in the family. 